This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining with me on this Monday, July the 22nd, in the year of our Lord, 2024. My name is Phil Wilson, and I'm an authorised lay minister in the parish of St. Peter's, Epsley, Redditch. Spend a few moments in silence. So we acknowledge God's presence with us. We meet in the presence of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today in the church's calendar, we remember Mary Magdalene, or Magdala, as she's sometimes known, a town on the west coast of Lake Galilee where she was born, and so named possibly to differentiate her from the other several Marys whom we read in the Gospels. And in Acts chapter 12, verse 12, also, the Old Testament reference to Moses and Aaron's sister, Miriam, a name meaning Mary in Hebrew. You can find that in Exodus chapter 2, verse 7. There's Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, Mary, the mother of John Mark, Mary, the wife of Clopas, the Gospels place these Marys at the foot of the cross. Mary Magdalene is thought to be the woman Jesus healed of seven evil spirits and the woman who poured expensive perfume on Jesus' head or feet, possibly out of gratitude for being healed earlier of seven evil spirits. Jesus showed great sympathy to women who led promiscuous lives. Remember the woman at the well? Mary followed Jesus to the end of his ministry, traveling with other women who provided for the needs of the disciples and Jesus. She was the first to see Jesus after his resurrection, thinking him, him, thinking him to be the gardener at first, until Jesus spoke her name. Mary. We can learn from Mary's life, generously supporting the church's ministry and being a devoted disciple. Spread the collect for this day. Almighty God, whose Son restored Mary Magdalene to health of mind and body and called her to be a witness to his resurrection. Forgive our sins and heal us by your grace, that we may serve you in the power of his risen life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A psalm for us today is Psalm 32, and that will be read for us by Sir David Suchet. Psalm 32 Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then 
I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all the faithful pray to you, while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord, and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, help us to be open towards you. May we be willing to acknowledge our wrongdoings. May we be willing to hear and follow your instruction. May your eye ever watch over us. May the waters of trouble not overwhelm us. You are our shelter to guard us from trouble. You surround us with faithful love. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven. O oh, my soul, rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the book, the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, reading from verse 14. It's 1 Samuel 16, from verse 14. Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the lyre. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes on you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I've seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He's a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine-looking man. And the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Saul, to Jesse, and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey, loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them with his son David to Saul. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armour bearers. And Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Whenever the Spirit from God came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We don't know for certain what the evil spirit was that tormented Saul. It may have been severe depression, which may have been one of the seven evil spirits which tormented Mary Magdalene. But the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. He turned away from the Lord and was now facing the consequences. 
Saul's advisors suggest they find someone who's musical and can play the lyre or the harp to soothe Saul's nerves. David is chosen when Jesse, his father, sends presents with David to give to Saul. David settles into court life very quickly. Saul appoints him to be one of his armour bearers. We have to bear in mind that Samuel had previously anointed David to be king while Saul was still alive. So David would have been very apprehensive in Saul's presence, being very careful what he said or did. God was at work in ways no one could see. It seems plain to us from our distant perspective. But at the time, perhaps only Samuel knew what was going on. Unwittingly, Saul was becoming dependent on the one designated to succeed him. We come now to our New Testament reading, which is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8. From verse 1. Luke chapter 8, from verse 1. After this, Jesus travelled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chiesa, the manager of Herod's household. Susanna and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mary of Magdala, or Magdalene, is probably best known for her unselfish act of anointing Jesus with expensive perfume. And you can read that in the earlier chapter of 7, from verses 37 to 50. She first of all washed Jesus' feet with her tears, and then applied the perfume. The Pharisee who invited Jesus to have dinner with him is indignant exclaiming that if Jesus were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman she was, a sinner. Jesus tells the Pharisee a story about two people who owed money to a moneylender. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50 denarii. Neither could repay their debts. So he forgave them their debts. Jesus asked the question, which of the debtors would love him more? Simon Farsi replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. It may be that Mary used the ungent to perfume her flesh in forbidden acts, but she was now offering it to God in a more praiseworthy manner. She had coveted with earthly eyes but now through penitence, these are consumed with tears. She displayed her hair to set off her face, but now her hair dries her tears. She had spoken proud things with her mouth, but in kissing the Lord's feet, she now planted her mouth on the Redeemer's feet. For every delight, therefore, she had had in herself, she now offers herself in sacrifice. She turned the mass of her crimes to virtues in order to serve God entirely in penitence and faith. Come now to a time of prayer. The response the Lord hear us is Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray. We pray for the worldwide church which confesses Jesus to be Son of God, 
Give strength, Father, where she is weak. Uphold the faint-hearted. Surround the persecuted with your strong town. Strengthen the faint-hearted, so that, Father, you will hasten the day when the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. I pray, Father, for all those involved in finding a successor to our Bishop John of Worcester. We thank you for blessing us with John's ministry and pray he'll be able to relax more and enjoy retirement. May our new bishop be of your choice, upholding the gospel and strong in leadership. Encourage all members of the churches in the diocese to register their ideas of what qualities they would wish to see in our new bishop. We thank you, Father, for our own clergy, Garth, Ian, Linda, and our LLMs. Keep them in good health. Bless and empower their ministry in our church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we continue to pray for our new Prime Minister, Sir Keith Starmer, together with all his cabinet and political advisors, that they may seek your wisdom in forming new policies and ideas to hopefully improve the economy and the standard of living, enabling many people to be lifted out of poverty. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the many men and women who were elected recently for the first time into positions of mayor, and councillors, that they too will seek your wisdom and guidance to implement measures which would benefit their towns or cities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Father, for an end of violence of any sort which might disrupt the forthcoming election in the USA. Lord, keep safe all seeking election to government. Keep all security forces alert to any danger from attempted assassination. So the whole process of the election will run smoothly and effectively. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May the healing mercies of the risen Lord Jesus Christ enter into the souls, minds and bodies of all those known to us who are in any kind of need and those mentioned in our weekly newsletter, The Catch, to bring healing, peace and comfort to their lives. Give patience to those waiting for hospital appointments. Give strength and courage to all with long-term illnesses so all may know you care for them at this difficult time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, would you comfort all those who are sad at this time through the loss of a loved one? May they know your loving arms surrounding them, bringing comfort and hope for their future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so we draw all our prayers together as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining with me this morning, and God willing, we can meet again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So we may go into the world to walk in God's light, 
to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. And let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.